Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. All right, today's project we're starting off on is going to be a chain and sprocket drive for a cable drum on an old American crane. And this old American crane has got sort of like an intermediate shaft with a shifting cog. And when it shifts over one way, it's for boom raising, and then you'll be able to hold it with the brake and shift the cog over. And the cog is going to shift over to a pinion sprocket, which is then going to come down and drive the drum. And this is going to mount on the drum. So we got uh, we got kind of out the center. We're going to do that in the uh, lathe over there, and we're going to set up uh, the face plate, and we're going to have to pull the gap. So I'm going to show you how to pull a gap in the lathe, put the gap back in and also run with the gap and some other uh, aspects of actually using the face plate. I'm also going to show you how to sharpen a tree panning tool. In fact, I don't have one, so I'm going to make one from scratch. And I'll be going through that in this video series as well. But for right now, what we're going to do is i got to lay out a four bolt or four hole pattern in here to where I can go ahead and put uh, four T-nuts uh, and, and studs into the face plate and hold this against the faceplate. All right, so I'm going to bring you in closer and I'm going to show you how I'm going to lay this out. And we're actually going to use, because this is an equal amount of teeth on a sprocket, and we'll be able to actually use the teeth themselves in laying out all the lines. All right, we're going to need, uh, we'll need a 24 inch scale, just a nice rigid scale. This is a piece of metal, one inch diameter. We're going to use a scribe. We're going to use a piece of 3 8 key stock and uh, we'll need a, a center punch and a hammer. All right, this is going to give us our four locations. Well, we might, we might need one other piece there. Um, we might need a uh, square. We're going to use that to set our depth in from the OD of one of the teeth there. We're going to set that off to the side for now. All right, now this is a 140 chain size and the 140 chain size is is an inch and three quarters from one tooth to another tooth and you know you can you can see that from that point to that point from that valley to that valley uh, however you want to measure it you can you can see that that is now if you got this in here at one inch, and this in here at one inch, and that's inch and three quarter from there to there. That's three quarters of an inch left in between. Okay, so here's the three eighths, and we can take that three eighths and just let it float here. You can scribe right around that one inch, and then you can take and you can just scribe right in there, and that brought you a connecting point of line between that tooth and that tooth right there. Now we're gonna do the same thing 180 degrees around here, and which will be on that tooth right there. Now we can put that line right on there and the same thing on this side right here and we can hold that down nice and tight and we got one established straight across line now we're going to go ahead and take the split line between the other way or the other side here and we're going to go ahead and create the the 90 now if you wanted to check you could come right over here and boom 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 you can eyeball that up and right there's the 90 on that one there all right so we'll go ahead And 
and now we'll rotate this around. All right, now we got our crisscross there laid out. Now we need to know our diameter that we want the circle to go in on. <clears throat> and uh, uh, we're going to measure that off our drum here. Let's take a look at our drum. All right, the diameter we picked uh, was to be two and a half inches in from the edge right here. And that way it stays out of clearance of, of other uh, hole patterns that's going to be put in here later on, but it gives us a nice uniform hole pattern. So we're going to go ahead and hit the four points at two and a half inches in from the edge. And swing it around in here and hit our last area. Alright. Now we're going to go ahead and give it a good swift uh, center punch here. I like giving a light center punch and then you can kind of steer it from there till you know that you're back uh, right over your crosshair. Then you can lay into one. Uh, it just, you know, your first instinct to getting on there sometimes is right on the money, but sometimes you're off just a little bit. So don't go in too deep until you absolutely like where you're at and then nail it. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the truck off. We need uh, need to grab our little spanner wrench here. And we need to get this in low gear. So that's in the slowest gear right there. That's the only way you can really lock this in. And uh, we gotta reverse the nut here. And it the nut on these. Uh, uh, spindles and uh, anyway it locks it on and it locks it off or slides it off alright so most important thing is is to go ahead and I put something soft on the ways right here now this one here I don't have a uh, eye bolt on it and I manhandle this one all the time and of course I like running it with the number two jaw up because I know where the uh, the keyway is on there. Now I get up on the lathe and I just hold the, the pressure here. I back off the nut. Once I know the nut's free, I gotta hold a chuck, and then I'm just gonna lightly set it down right on the lathe. 
right. Now I'm not banging on the ways or anything else. So just keeping that nice and polite. All right. Now from here, actually I want to I want to blow it out because. All right. We've already pulled two Allens going in this direction here that hold the gap in, and the two Allens that go in downward. Um, <laughs> I have to laugh because I was pulling this thing out and talking away and of course uh, the battery uh, shut down the camera. Alright, the gap is held in here by those four bolts and then I break it loose because you're usually a pretty good grip of oil because I heavily oil it when I set it back in there and float it into place. And I'll explain that when we get all done with this job and we're getting ready to put it back in here. Alright, I got the chair over there and I like to set the thing on. You can see that's the meeting surface that goes against the waves, and that's the meeting surface that goes against the, the bottom down there. All right. And we don't do anything other special from the rest of it here. We can operate and function our lathe right off uh, the even sometimes we overhang just slightly over the edge of this here. But this is this is the main section now and I can swing 29 and a half inches in here all right we're gonna get the crane set up uh, our gantry slid over here and we'll be able to grab the uh, face plate and get it up into position all right I'm just giving you a, a zoom in here at the top of the gantry here and you can see that I uh, I put two pin stops right here. These are deadhead uh, stops that when they come here or on the other side, this will never go too far to let this thing fall over. It is on the verge of being right at the limits to doing that. I also made a sliding block to where if I did want these things to be perfectly straight or locked, I can lock that. And, and keep these in. <laughs> it's filthy. Yeah. Don't look at it so close. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's kind of how I made these. And you can see that this is just one pipe over another pipe. And I wallowed the flange here. I machined the flange, wallowed that in there. And then this is just a plate butted here and a, and a piece of round stock in here, a couple of walls, just so that I could secure that upright on the end of this beam right here. All right, now let's go ahead and pick up our face plate. All right, we got this over here close. Paper fits, I don't really like oil, but this uh, Zep 45, I, I want at least an oil film. It's not, it's real, real thin. It's not, uh, all I'm trying to do is get some oil spread around on my metal components so that they're not going to rust. Um, it's more so. And we can take the threads a little bit. All right. Chips, no grit, 